You want to put a dent in your wallet, water? Sure. Tired of having stock kit lens on your camera? Yeah. Find out more in this video where we talk about how do you spend your money, big bucks, on three different L lenses. This is definitely financial advice. All right, now if you have additional money to spend on lenses, what kind of lenses should you get first? In this video, I'm gonna be answering on what lenses should you buy first for advanced level photographers and video shooters. And for bonus as well, I'm gonna be talking about the R7 crop sensor camera to that of the R6 full frame when using full frame EF lenses. So here we have the 7200 2.8. We have the 85 1.4 and we have the 16 to 35 2.8. So coming in from these three lenses, let's work our way up from the widest angle all the way to telephoto. In the widest angle, we have the 16 to 35 and this is at 2.8. So if you have this lens, you basically have the widest angle covered. And why do I use the wide angle lenses? They're basically used for establishing locations, establishing scenes and putting your talent into a scene. And on top of that, the 16 millimeter does produce extreme distortion unique videos. The 35 works really well for when you're going up close and shooting subjects if you want to have a little bit of separation from them from the background but not enough for them to not know where they are in the background. So the 16 to 35 works well for establishing shots. Now let's move on to the middle lenses which is the 85 1.4 close-up shots, it's always important to capture the best and highlight moments of couples' reaction of them tearing up, laughing with joy, or celebrating. And those are the best ways for you to utilize the 85 1.4. Now moving on to the more telephoto range. Now these are for the lazy people who want to sit back, relax on a tripod, don't want to have a gimbal. I really do suggest trying the 7200. Among all these lenses here, I think, Walter, that the 7200 is the only one that can't be mounted on a gimbal. Yeah. I think I think that's accurate because it's really long and like especially if you're using on these cameras, you have the adapters as well. So it's uh, and the lens itself is already so heavy, and then you're adding another like distance between. Correct. Them. Yes. Yeah. Correct. So uh, another thing to note is that all of these cameras are RF, so we need an adapter, right? We need an adapter, and I'll put a picture of an adapter here. <laughs> and these are basically volume taking devices that basically prolongs your lens longer than it should be right, away from the camera. So when you have this kind of length added into your camera, I think the trouble is when you're trying to balance it on a gimbal or a yeah. glide cam. I, I've actually never seen people balancing uh, the 7200 on a glide cam. Right. But I have seen like people balancing the 7200 on a gimbal. Oh, right. uh, RSC2, oh. you know, uh, you know, those kind of really expensive ones. Right, right, right. You can theoretically do it, but it's just very really difficult for you to mount it on because yeah. of the way the, the lens works. It's so big, it's exactly. so long, and it's very heavy as well. Yeah. All right, so now we got the lenses out of the way. Let's look into what kind of bodies do we recommend for new videographers who actually want to go into the more pro series lines. Into a full frame, we have the R6. And into crop sensor, we have the R7. We're going to be discussing the differences between these two on the effects on the lenses, which are EF full frame, and how does it look. So with the R7 coming in at only 6,299, you're actually getting a great sensor, which is actually a 33 megapixel sensor, and it's crop, which means it has 1.6 crop. Now moving into how will this adapt into your EF lenses, you actually need to have the EF to RF adapter, which comes free when you purchase an R7. Now having this new, and having this R7 on the EF lenses, the first thing I do notice is a drop in quality in photo mode. Surprisingly, having a crop sensor on an EF full frame and taking photos high resolution stills, you can actually see the huge differences in what you lose. And what do you lose actually? You basically lose a lot of the depth in the image. As image gets cropped in, you basically don't have the bokeh as you would normally have on a full frame. And it somewhat leaves like a lackluster feeling behind my image. So most of my wedding shoots with the R7 turns out a little bit of a lackluster compared to even a DSLR full frame, which is the 60 Mark II from where I came from. So I never really did appreciate using an R7 for photo stills, but I really do appreciate the leaps and bounds coming into video as the R7 crop does fantastic in video. And that's where I major in. So I shoot my commercials mostly on the R7 um, even about having that 1.6 crop, I do really love and how crisp the image looks, almost reminiscent of Sony's cameras, like yeah. how sharp it is. 
you know, because the sensor downgrades from a 7K sensor. Down samples. To <laughs> down samples from a 7K sensor down to a 4K output. And I really love the fact that this 4K that we get is so sharp. Yeah. And most of the time when I shoot commercials, which has a little bit of a font or some wordings around it, it really does show. And I lend clients based on the resolution of my and quality of my videos. So I really do appreciate the R7 when it comes to video. So now that's the R7 side. So now that you've known the pros and the cons of the R7 and what I recommend and don't recommend, let's look into the R6 real quick. Walter, take it away. Okay, so the thing about the R6's video that I like, I came from a I come from a background of like using cheaper cameras and uh, mostly things that you can just kind of like get by with and having this camera for the first time and I, I know like there's a lot of like controversy around like C-Log3 and stuff but C-Log3 has been really nice for me to use on this camera um, I guess if we're talking about differences between these two this is a full frame camera so uh, popular lenses like the 16-35 and um, you know all the 24-70 they are exactly what they appear. But then to the uh, 4K find on this camera, which is a 7 point something K down sample to a 4K, this one does a 6K down sample to 4K. It's sharp, arguably not as sharp as this, but it kind of makes up for it with the lenses that you use because with, um, with the full frame lenses that you're able to use on this, um, you, I don't know if you're familiar. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the fact that when you use a full frame lens on a crop sensor, you have chances of degrading the image a little bit just because you're cropping into a smaller part of the lens, which means things like chromatic aberrations are going to be enlarged. And um, you know, if you have like soft uh, edges, it's going to be enlarged. Uh, like it's going to be enlarged as well. So those could be issues that you might have to deal with on that. For this one, the images ask you, um, you know, whatever the lens is output, uh, whatever they output of the lens is in terms of resolution, the resolving power is going to be exactly the same on a full frame camera. It also has a crop mode, which you can use crop sensor lenses on this. Uh, unfortunately, the, I think uh, settings like 100 frames per second or 120 is not available in movie cropping mode. Um, apart from that, it has pretty much a similar specs in terms of uh, frame rate options as well as resolution rate, except the 4K is only 4K. Uh, do, does yours, uh, does the R7 have only IPV or does it have all I as well? No, everything's in IPV for... Okay, so, so. that's the same for these two cameras then. Only IPV, unlike cameras like the R5, R3, they have more than just the IPV. Right, right, they they right. can shoot raw, they can shoot all I. So you are limited by those, but I haven't had issues shooting IPB yet. Um, though that could be an ignorant thing because we ha I haven't shot I all I yet, so I don't know what I'm actually missing out on. Uh, but as for now, like the quality is everything I could ask for in a body will be um, everything I could ask for in a sensor. It's doing. So what did you take on the R six for photo? photo oh, sorry. Be before that, another the like we have to adjust the elephant room, which would be the overheating. Which is, oh, it, it is sure. an issue. Let's look it into overheating between the R6 and the R7. Yeah. So if you're deciding to spend a lot of money on a body, you would want a camera to work when you turn it on. Yeah. However, having so much power and processing going through these cameras, they tend to overheat over yeah. time. Especially so with the small bodies as well. Let's like, look into yeah. the overheating aspects of the R7 and has it actually overheat on our works previously mm -hmm. on the R7 and to that of the R6. Okay. So short answer, no, it has not overheated on right. my shoots. And mine not as well, but I have to say, on paper, it would overheat really quickly if you're using this on, and depending on the environment. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding it for so long. What? Oh, I sneeze. Oh, sneeze. <laughs> I've been holding it for so long. <laughs> on paper, it is, it's meant to overheat. <laughs> no, it's it, no, it's not meant to overheat. No, no, on paper, it's, on paper. It's meant to overheat. It's That's not like, meant to overheat. Oh, you mean it's like, just, you want me to wear it differently? It's a repercussion that is <laughs> overheat because of the amount of specs and videos and whatever processing they has to do, yeah. it tends to overheat. No, no, uh, what I'm trying to say is like, on paper, it is going to overheat. Like the okay. the reality is that it should it sure, will it will overheat. Sure, let's do that. No, then. no, not yeah. not on paper as in like it's impossible for the camera. On paper as in like the specs that Canon has put out saying that. Okay, let's do that again. Yeah, okay. Let's do that again. Okay. okay, so on paper, if you shoot 4K uh, on this camera, 
it should overheat after uh, some, I think for 4K, 30 frames a second, it should over here and I, I don't know you want to put the child here maybe they could not okay, really so. <laughs> I don't want to put the child in this bureau right right right, right. So. yeah so uh, it should overheat after about uh, 30 minutes uh, no 20 minutes of recording but I don't the thing is that the nature of the work I do does not require long um, like you know recording 4k for like long periods of times uh, the only time I've actually used 4k lo uh, like for long form recording is when I do YouTube videos, which um, so far I've been doing a lot of 1080p recording just in case it would overheat. But um, I think about the last two videos that I've done are 4K continuous and they never overheated because I was in an aircon room and stuff. So that might be the case as well. So yeah, very I, nothing to complain about. Really nice camera. All right, so just to wrap this video up, we're also going to be throwing side-by-side -side comparisons between the R7 without its speed boosted element to that of the R6 in side-by-side -side in 4K25. So you'll be the judge for yourself as towards the end of this video, you can decide on whether you want to purchase in R6 or in R7 for the budget that you have. And should you future-proof yourself to go full frame or should you save some mucks, go for the R7 and buy an additional air speed booster to mount on it to basically get a full frame equivalent. But truth be told, Walter, the R6 isn't exactly full frame. Yeah, yeah, that's a 1.1%. And you haven't uh, mentioned that one second. <laughs> you think you would get away <laughs> no, by saying the R R6 <laughs> being full frame. It's, I mean, no, like, folks. <laughs> It's negatable. It is not full frame. <laughs> so it's negatable differences. Like, what what is the crop factor we're dealing with with the R6? 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.1. Exactly. You barely perfect. notice it. You barely notice it. I promise you, you barely notice it. <laughs> yeah. Right, this, this one's fun, I like this video. So with this in mind, yeah, um, really glad that we made this video and I'm really glad that looking at this footage side by side. Uh, he's happy with his R6, you happy with your yeah, R6? Yeah, definitely. Am I happy with my R7? Sure hell I am. So, will you be happy with the R6? Will you be happy with the R7? Absolutely. Yeah. Buy Canon, forget about Sony, and these three <laughs> lenses are the best investment that you can make. So with this in mind, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out his channel with Walter Fernandez, and we're going to be collaborating on a couple of more contents. So if you don't want to spend so much money on your lenses, there's a next coming video where we're going to be showing you the same setup of the holy trinity of lenses and tool bodies, but in a more cheaper alternative. So stay tuned for that video. And if you want to look into supporting this channel, there are a royalty footage that you can purchase onto Pond5. And Pond5 is basically a royalty website which you can tune in and you can look through my footages. And if you want to use my footage for your personal project or for your client project, feel free to license them. I get a bit of a money out from that. And thank you so much for watching again. I'll see you again, Walter, in yeah. the next video. Sorry, I thought you were there. I said, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Outro. Nice. Done. Okay.